Hi folks, Rodney back again with Rodney's Northwest Ride and Reviews. I've had a couple days on my new Tacoma and I wanted to kind of run through the instrument cluster. Um, it, it's truly amazing how much you can actually customize the screens here. Uh, and then I want to show you how to kind of organize it the way you may want and then how all the features work in it. So as you can see here, um, Obviously, for somebody who's coming from a third gen, it may seem like there's a lot going on in the instrument cluster, and, and there is. Um, sometimes it seems like it's too much, and I'll kind of explain what I mean in a moment. Uh, obviously, you see the stop sign showing there. There's part of your road sign assistance, and it's the camera reading the sign that's right in front of us. Um, but this is this is a sport mode here, uh, and when I say sport mode, it's, this, it's the, uh, the meter style, and I'll show you what I mean here in a moment. Um, but first off, I want to talk about, um, let's just kind of run through the features. So you have three different profiles and you can set them up in different sequence. So for instance, if I wanted to customize, um, if I wanted just a blank, you know, that's what it would look like. But if I wanted to customize it, show the eco indicator, I can show navigation in that screen. I could put audio in there, a traction monitor if you were off-roading. Uh, if you're towing a trailer and you set up trailer brakes, uh, you can customize it for, for different trailers. I think you can actually store up to 10. And then if I wanted to customize the other side, let's switch profiles on accident. There we go. So there's obviously different things. Now, because you have three different profiles, you can set up for different circumstances. So let's say, for instance, you're a daily driver, uh, you might wanna see fuel economy, you might wanna see navigation or even the stereo. But when you're towing a trailer, you may wanna see your trailer settings, you might wanna see your oil temperature, um, transmission temperature, you know, things of that nature. Um, I personally like to see the turbo boost uh, one of the things about you know going from a six cylinder to a four cylinder is that you kind of like to hear that turbo whistle, uh, and then it's kind of interesting to see how much boost you're actually getting at that time. Um, I want to go into another setting here that kind of explains how to all right, go into settings menu. And then I'm gonna come back to these features, but I wanna explain how to get to the different meter settings. So here where it says meter setting, if you just push the okay button and open it up, go down to meter type. And so meter type, and I'll give you an example here. So you've got, almost looks like a blank screen. You still have your features in there, but you don't have the actual gauges. So like for instance, you don't have your um, RPMs and, and odometer in there, but you still have a digital odometer. You want to go to a single. So I'm going to get this out so you can actually see it. So this is what it would look like as a single. And here's what it looks like as a double. All right, so now you have another setting, and that's called meter style. So if you push and hold the meter style, you have four different categories that you can choose from. So it's casual style, smart style. You've probably seen this one more often than not on most of the Tacomas. And then what I actually prefer, and I'm going to back up for just a moment. So in the tough style, I want to show you one thing that I personally don't like about that. And that's probably the reason I don't use it. So um, as you see the RPMs moving up and down here, it seems a little too animated for me. And when you're driving, you get the same thing on the odometer over there. Um, and it just seems like, it seems too distracting. So I'm gonna go back and show you the one I like, which is sport or sporty. I'm 
which is this one here. Now, as you can see, the exterior of my truck is red, um, so the gauges really blend in well with everything else on the truck because you got black interior, you know, you got your door posts, and, and everything is black inside of the truck, uh, and then, of course, the red gauges. Um, so if you watch the RPMs, um, yes, it looks similar, uh, but to me, it just seems, uh, you know, it's not as... It's not as distracting for me anyway, and that's why I actually prefer it. All right, so now we're gonna go back and we're gonna talk about some of the settings that you have in here. And this will be your safety screen. All right, so first one is LDA, which is part of your lane departure. So you push and hold it, it opens up an internal menu, and you can turn that feature on or off. Now on the steering wheel, you also have a button here that you can quickly turn that feature on and off. New for the 24 Tacoma is you have different alert options. So you can either have it as a vibrating steering wheel or you can have it as an audible alert. The alert timing is just a sensitivity setting and you've got a, a low and a high. Your BSM stands for your blind spot monitoring. So if you look in the mirror for a second, I'll turn it off. Now I'll turn it back on. And that's what it looks like when somebody's in your blind spot. So it will stay lit up in an amber color like that and will do so until the person is no longer there. But if you put your turn signal on, it will start blinking. Uh, there is no audible alert on that feature. Your pre-collision is your, uh, excuse me, your PCS is your pre-collision system and the warning timer is a sensitivity level again, and then of course you can turn that feature on or off. PDA is proactive detection assistant, or excuse me, driver assistance. So that is a feature that is brand new. It's part of the Safety Sense 3.0. What that does, when you're driving, it has sensors around the vehicle, and so if you're pulling up to a stoplight and there's somebody in front of you, uh, if you don't notice them in time, it works similar to the pre-collision system where it will slow the vehicle down. It's a proactive approach. Uh, but also if it sees pedestrians or somebody on a bicycle um, and it looks like they may be kind of protruding into the intersection, uh, it will also help slow the vehicle down. It also, when coming up to a curve, um, if it senses that you're going too fast for the curve, it can also help slow the vehicle down. P is for parking sensors. So on this particular model, and this is the TRD off-road upgrade package, you do have parking sensors both front and rear. Your RCTA stands for Rear Cross Traffic Alert. And so as you're backing up, say you're at a grocery store, as you back up, it picks up that, um, you know, people coming down the aisle that you can't necessarily see. So it could be a car, it could be a pedestrian, maybe somebody pushing a shopping basket, um, but it picks up that cross traffic that you can't see. PKSB, I forget what the acronym stands for, um, but basically what that is, is it uses, utilizes the parking sensors uh, as you're backing up and if it detects an object and it looks like you're not going to stop in time, it will automatically take over and stop the vehicle. Now, I mentioned this in other videos. I've learned this the hard way. If you put a bike rack or a trailer back there, it senses that there's an object there. And as you start backing up, it will start beeping. Uh, but if you don't do something fairly soon, it's going to take over and lock up the brakes. And unfortunately, it can be kind of embarrassing. Uh, so you have the ability to turn that feature off and uh, I would recommend doing so anytime you put a bike rack or a trailer behind. RSA stands for road sign assistance. We talked about the stop sign in front of us here, as you can see on the dash. Um, but the camera can read three different signs. It reads speed limit signs, caution signs, and stop signs. Vehicle settings. So the picture of the coffee cup that you see there, it's called what, it's what they've called sway warning. Or, and it monitors how you're doing when you're driving. And if it looks like you're getting sleepy, a picture of a coffee cup is going to come up to let you know, hey, take a break, get some coffee. Your DRCC is your dynamic radar cruise control. And basically what that does is there are settings in there that can determine how fast you want it to take over. So for instance, if you have your uh, adaptive cruise set when you're out on the highway, it determines how quickly you want it to slow down or how quickly you want it to accelerate after that person that's in front of you speeds back up. Uh, we talked about trailer settings in there. You can set it for 10 different trailers. Uh, you go in there and you kind of determine, you know, is it a single axle, dual axle? You know, what's the, what's the weight of the trailer expected? Um, and then you can also set the 
the uh, gain on the integrated brake controller, which you see right here. You can set that from in here as well, or you can do it uh, digitally on the dash there. Trailer light check. You can check all your lights on your trailer uh, before you take off just to make sure everything's working properly. Um, the alert will let you know if your tailgate is down. TPWS is your tire pressure warning sensor. So here's something that I found very interesting yesterday. I saw this on another view, it was TRD John, and he mentioned that when he first got his truck, it just felt like it was bouncing all over the place. So I have a 2022 Tundra, and I'm just turning it back in off of my lease. Um, but when I first got the truck, the one thing that you'll notice, and you'll notice the same thing on this Tacoma, is that they have hydraulic uh, cab mounts. And so it feels like you're just gliding across the road. But when you hit a, a big pothole or you hit a big bump or something, you definitely feel it. Um, and it's, that's the one thing that I really noticed on the Tundra. It felt very firm in that sense. Um, so anyway, what John mentioned is that it felt like it was bouncing all over the place. So he talked to another person that had done reviews on his Tacoma. And he said that when he got it, the tire pressure was too high. So the recommended tire pressure um, on the new Tacoma is 30 PSI. And so I'm gonna go in here and you can go to tire pressure setting. Um, you can either set it by a specific, a specified pressure. And so you got 30, 32, or 35. You can actually see your current pressure. And I've adjusted it yesterday, but when I first looked at it, I'm like, I'm gonna check that and see if that makes a difference. And sure enough, mine was at 48 PSI and the max is 51. So if you get your Tacoma and you feel like it's not riding properly, go back in and check your tire pressure. Uh, unfortunately, that's not something they're doing as part of their pre-delivery inspection, and they're just coming from the factory that way. So uh, that kind of takes care of the tire pressure warning system. Scheduled maintenance, normally when you take it in for an oil change, they're gonna take care of that for you, but you can go in there and you can reset it. And I just got mine, so um, resetting it didn't make a difference. And then of course you can set oil maintenance, uh, rear seat reminder, if you have small children, just remind you that uh, check the back seat. Uh, if you don't, you can turn that feature off and you'll get rid of that reminder, which I'm gonna do that now. Um, and then stop lights display. Um, so here's something that's interesting. So I'm gonna get back out of this. So if you see the bottom of the screen, you see those two lights that come up and that's what your stoplight display is. Why they've done that on the new Tacoma, I'm not 100% sure, um, but it does give you the ability to kind of a reminder of when you actually have your foot on the brake or maybe you've taken it off. So you can eliminate that feature if you want to. So that's kind of a breakdown on uh, you know the new instrument cluster. It's very customizable. There's a lot of information in there. Um, I'm gonna go back to one other feature here. When you turn the PDA on, and I just wanna give you a heads up, and you know, we talked about that was your proactive detection. Um, you will automatically turn on your lane departure. So for instance, if you turn your lane departure off, um, it gets a little annoying sometimes. Um, so basically what happens if you haven't had one with lane departure, uh, it reads the lines on the side of the road. So if you cross over the line, it will proactively help steer you back in the right direction. Uh, you also fear it'll vibrate or hear the audible alert. Um, when you put the proactive on, it automatically turns on lane departure. So keep that in mind. Um, it kind of catches me off guard because my Tundra didn't have that new feature. And, you know, I'm driving along and I'm pulling up to a, a, a intersection. There's a car in front of me. And I can feel the vehicle take over and start slowing down. Uh, but as I get close to the line, it wants to help steer it back in the right direction too. Um, so, you know, it's sometimes that's going to be too much for some people. So if you don't like that, you do have the ability to turn those features off. So hope you guys have enjoyed the video. Uh, if you have any questions, feel free to send them my way. Um, just a quick update. So the new Tundra, excuse me, the new Tacoma, uh, some, of the, some of the models, and I'm not sure if it's all the models, I'm still trying to gather that information, uh, come with a credit card key. Mine didn't have it when it came in, but we got another one almost identical to mine uh, that did have the credit card key with it. So as soon as I can get that information back from Toyota, I will pass that information along. I'll explain how it works. One thing I want to mention is the new Tacoma has the ability of, on some models, of the digital key. 
And so the digital key allows you to download the, the key on your phone. You can pass it on to somebody else that can drive your vehicle without giving them a key fob. Uh, my Tacoma did come with two key fobs, uh, and I think it's supposed to get the, the credit card key as well. But one thing I will mention about the digital key, you would think that with a digital key, you could just download it, pass it to somebody else, and as long as they have their cell phone with them, they could unlock the doors, get in and start the vehicle. Well, what I'm hearing, and I will confirm this uh, when I have a little more time, what I'm hearing is that with the digital key, uh, you actually have to have phone reception. So if you're out somewhere with you have no phone reception, uh, and you try to use your digital key, it's not gonna work. So what I'm trying to point out is that you don't wanna leave your key fob at home or give your uh, digital key to somebody else and they go out somewhere where they can't use it and then they're stuck. So anyway, thanks again for watching. Take the time to like and subscribe. I'll be coming out with weekly content. I'm gonna do a lot more reviews. Um, owner experience, it seems like I've had it for a couple days now. I enjoy it more and more each day. Uh, I'm finding new things about the truck and I'm going to kind of point those out. But the things that really stand out to me, I had two Tacomas in the past. Um, there's no body roll in this and that was the biggest thing that I really didn't care for in the older Tacomas that when you go around a corner, you had so much body roll um, that it just almost felt unstable at times. The second thing is that the steering on the third gen Tacoma, the truck wants to wander all over the road. And if you've driven one, you know exactly what I'm talking about. I did put some uh, KO2s on it and the KO2s actually made it worse because what would happen then is then those tires would actually follow the grooves in the road and want to pull you in a certain direction. Um, I, the new Tacoma wants to drive straight and so if you let your hand off the steering wheel it's going to try to keep straight as much as possible. Obviously if there is a bend in the road or, or um, you know if it does have some grooves in the road it will wander a little bit uh, but it's it's 100% better than the third gen Tacoma. Uh, performance is better, the ride is smoother. Uh, like I said, no body roll. Performance is much better in the truck. Um, fuel economy is better. So you're gonna love the new truck. I know a lot of people are having a hard time with, with all the new safety features and the, the four cylinder turbo, but uh, rest assured you will be happy. So anyway, thanks again for watching. Have a great day.